Hi everyone, welcome. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon. So whenever, wherever you are. So thanks for being here to this um, Facebook live event. So it's a very important occasion for us because it's the very first video live event here, also here on, on Facebook. And I have to say that I'm quite excited also to be the first <laughs> video member to uh, go in live uh, here, here on Facebook. So yeah, great. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, of course, uh, it's a live event, so you can uh, comment. Uh, you can. Uh, so I invite you also to comment, to ask your question, and to put any, you know, like. Uh, uh, so it's it's a kind of interactive section, and I I would love to hear from from you. So maybe I, I don't know. Just to let you know, or let to start. Uh, um, let me know where you come from. So so I understand also your 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 location, and uh, yeah. So. It's a, it's a very good event, and uh, I'm, as I said, I'm very excited. Um, before we start, anyway, I want to take uh, um, one moment to talk about uh, safety, because Vidya is a company that is 100% focused on safety. Uh, you know that in this moment in the world are happening a lot of, uh, a lot of things with the COVID-19, with the pandemic, uh, and it's always you know, important uh, to me to, um, to talk about, about these um, this topic so make sure that you are you are taking care about social distancing that you are wearing your mask uh, and uh, you protect yourself about this this virus that is you know it's, it's very serious so now moving now into the the topic for uh, for today as you have seen from the title of the um, of the event uh, we are going to talk about uh, uh, drilling of course first of all and and the second point is that we are going to talk about uh, um, uh, the drilling operation in the energy segment. So very good. I'm starting to see now your, your starting your, your comments. So nice to see people from UK. Hello, everybody. Now, the, um, as, as I was saying, today we are talking about uh, drilling operation in the energy sector. So we choose this topic essentially for two reasons. Okay. First of all, because um, energy segment uh, is always challenging okay because um, because of the component nature because of the material that normally are used to make this kind of component and then of course because uh, as we are a tool producer uh, we have now uh, a very good product uh, that is focused on deliver productivity uh, cost saving into the um, especially into the energy application not only for that but of course also into the energy energy segment um, so of course, uh, the energy we have seen that is challenging. And now if we connect uh, uh, everything, you know, um, the industry today and what is happening today into the world, uh, probably uh, what we have to look in terms of uh, uh, machining is not really to increase the productivity or probably to increase the output uh, in terms of production. But probably what is really important in my eyes is about reducing the cost. OK, so to make ourself or I mean ourself as a um, component producer uh, so I put myself in the shoes of, uh, of an end user okay of, uh, of uh, a machining shop so probably the, the, the what I'm looking now it will be really to reduce the cost of my machining operation okay because I need to uh, increase my uh, operation margin I need to increase my profit and, and make myself more competitive uh, because of the general situation so probably it's not really the case of uh, increasing the uh, productivity output. So today we are going to focus on this aspect. Okay, so the possibility to reduce the cost. And uh, um, especially now we are talking about drilling operations. So the cost per roll in the energy segment. Very good. So we said that uh, the energy segment uh, um, is quite big because we have a lot of uh, uh, component or material inside the segment and uh, I want to move again uh, the focus into uh, a, a specific topic so um, because when we talk about the energy we know that we can have uh, you know turbine blade uh, for the um, steam and gas turbine we can have valves uh, and flanges for the oil industry but one of the let me say uh, segment or sub segment into the energy where I would like to you know, put your attention more today is about the heat exchanger. Okay, the heat exchanger is uh, a very common 
kind of uh, advice that has been used in uh, many, many different proxies, from the petrochemical to the pharmacy to the uh, oil and gas uh, energy production. And uh, when we look, uh, so because we are, to, we are going to see how an exchanger is done, is made, uh, and when we are going to see uh, the component that we have, uh, we can see that we have a lot of drilling operation in it, first of all. We can have a lot of challenging material, okay, that needs to be machined. And then, uh, um, of course, we, we are going to understand also the challenge in the setup that normally uh, we have or we could have in machining components for the, uh, for the heat exchanger. So again, uh, thanks for being here. I uh, say hello to all the people who are joining in this moment. Uh, great, thanks to be here. Don't, don't forget to put a like and of course to uh, put your comment. So I see people all around the world because I see now people coming from India, coming from Belarus. Wow, fantastic. So great. And I, I really love that because I, I love the fact that we are a global community and now we are all together here talking about uh, uh, drilling with, uh, with video. So, now, as I said, this is a live event, uh, and I don't want to, let me say, have a static event. Uh, so I want to be a little bit more dynamic. Uh, so that's why I uh, now leave my desk and uh, move my camera in a different position. So let me just uh, set up a little bit myself uh, to, be, uh, to be ready, because now I want to you know, start talking about uh, the, uh, the topic uh, uh, that we are going to, to see today. So, as we said, uh, we are talking about it exchanger, and now the, the very funny thing is that uh, uh, I think that we are in 2020, we have a lot of technology, you see people using uh, CAD, uh, CAM system, 3D modeling, uh, all the stuff, but honestly, personally, what I still consider very valuable, is, especially if we are talking about mechanics and engineering, is end drawings, okay? So that's why I decided uh, to not use any kind of uh, uh, super technological um, uh, support from, from computer or 3D modeling, modeling but uh, to leverage my end drawing capability and make this drawing by myself. So put a like if you like it, of course. <laughs> I think, um, uh, as I said, even if we are in 2020, end drawing is still a valuable uh, things to have uh, for, for engineer like, like me. So what we have here, so this um, basically represent uh, a, the section of an heat exchanger, okay? Because I wanted to explain first uh, uh, what it is, of course, and, and how, it is, uh, how it works. And after that, we are going to see the two main components that you can see already here, so the tube sheet and the buffers, okay? So we're going to say to understand what they are, first of all, and how they are machined, because there are, as I said, a lot of challenges uh, into machining these two type of components. And then, of course, we are going to see some more about, about the solution that VIDA can provide. Then, of course, now, as I said, this is my representation of uh, a NIT exchanger. And essentially, the function of a NIT exchanger is to transfer the temperature from one fluid to another, okay? That it could be uh, increase the temperature or um, more often, let me say, to lower the temperature. So into the process chain of, uh, of uh, um, petrochemical or, or other kind of, uh, of industry. So there are two fluids that are flowing into an heat exchanger. And uh, basically one is getting, uh, let me say, is uh, getting a lower temperature because of the exchange between the two fluids, right? Um, so the representation is that we have uh, these kind of uh, green lines that are uh, representing the tube bundles. Okay, the tube bundle is where we have uh, the primary fluid uh, that is going through uh, this bundle. And then we have uh, uh, an inlet and an outlet uh, where the, the fluid uh, that is now being processed uh, is going through the bundle okay, and uh, transfer the heat uh, from this primary fluid uh, to the other fluid. Uh, okay? So the principle is that, as I said, we have two fluids that they, they must remain separate and, and uh, transfer the temperature uh, between each other. Um, so this is more or less the principle how an heat exchanger works or why we have an heat exchanger. And then, of course, uh, as we said, we have this component called buffers here in the middle. So the, these are, mm, let me say, very thin plates, normally made out of uh, very low carbon steel, okay? 
And the, um, the meaning of uh, this component is, of course, to also add some structure to the, to the tube bundle, okay, to make it more stronger. But of course, it's also to deviate the flow of the fluid uh, to increase the time uh, of contact between the two fluids, okay? So instead of going straight uh, from the inlet to the outlet, uh, with the buffer in between, uh, the fluid will take more time so we can increase the efficiency and uh, of course have a, a, a much higher uh, exchange of, uh, of it. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. I'm just checking if I have any comment or questions. So don't forget uh, it's, it's a live event. You can, uh, you can always type in your comment and, uh, and uh, uh, make your question. So I see another people is joining from Portugal. Hello everyone, thanks for being here. Okay, so now we understood uh, more or less how a neat exchanger works and how the structure of a neat exchanger is made. Okay, so the, the, the thing is that we have the buffers, as we said, uh, in between, and they are anyway a very important component, okay, for the structure of the heat exchanger. But when we are going to see how they are made uh, or, uh, let me say, the level of quality that normally is necessary in this type of machining, we have a, a completely different uh, um, uh, point of view and we are going to talk more, um, more about that. Then, uh, of course, to, to, let me say, keep everything together, uh, the heat exchanger normally has a tube sheet, okay, that it could be one in the front, okay, depending on the configuration, or we could have even two tube sheets, okay, one in the front and one on the back of, uh, of the heat exchanger. So the tube sheet, uh, let me say, is the main component uh, of, uh, uh, of the heat exchanger uh, for, for two reasons. One is because of the structure, because of course, uh, if you look at the thickness, if you look at the diameter sometimes, so it's, uh, it's the biggest component that we have inside the heat exchanger, first of all. And then it uh, requires a very precise machining because uh, we have a lot of ceilings okay, into the, um, uh, the heat exchanger to make sure that the two fluids are not, uh, um, are not mixing together, okay? So we have normally um, the, the, um, the ceiling in this position, okay, in the front and of course also on the other side to make sure, as I said, that we have no leaking, so the two fluids are not, are not mixing together. So that's why in the heat exchanger, we have a lot of, uh, um, there is a lot of importance in terms of quality, okay, and, and precision. So you, we cannot just uh, make a hole or make a turning operation and that's it, but we need to, you know, um, to make machining with a, with a lot of precision. Anyway, so the first thing I want to say in terms of machining, what is important is that both the components, the tube sheet and the, and the buffer, they have a lot of holes in them, okay, so because we have tubes, okay, and all the tubes has to go through the buffers and they have to go in or through the, the tube sheet. So we have basically one hole for each tube and in mid-size heat exchanger or even, you know, even bigger, we have thousands of, uh, of tubes, okay. So I saw uh, some of our customers making tube sheet like uh, two meter in diameter with uh, more than two thousands all uh, in, in the component uh, in a diameter between, I don't know, 24 to 26 millimeters, something like that. So a lot of holes, okay? So you can understand now how critical it is the, um, the drilling operation when we talk about heat exchanger. So uh, it's probably the main operation, okay? Uh, of course, we have some turning on the tube sheet, but uh, uh, what is important is make 2000, 2500, so it, a lot of holes uh, into the tube sheet. So you need to have uh, a product that is um, reliable, of course, and consistent into performance, okay? Because you need to have, you know, a kind of um, reliable to life that you are sure that you are, you are, you are capable to make 5000 holes uh, in, in one shot uh, without any interruptions. Uh, so it's important that uh, the consistency of the tool um, is always there and also the reliability, of course. And then, of course, uh, you need to make the, the, the hole faster, okay? Because um, if you want to lower the cost per hole, okay? And here we are going back to the, let me say, competitiveness that we were talking uh, at the beginning of the live. Um, it's not only 
buying a cheaper product okay is not always the case so the, the cost of the tool believe me represent only between the three to five percent of the cost of the component so the cost of the tool is really the minimum part of the cost of a component what makes the biggest part of the cost of a component is the machining time or let me say the machine cost okay where we take in consideration the electricity where we take in consideration the uh, machine hourly rate uh, uh, when we take in consideration probably also the labor cost okay so we have um, a lot of component there but the, the the best way to lower the cost of a component uh, where we talk about machining only is reducing the machine time okay and to reduce the machine time in in a product like a tube sheet uh, you need to reduce your time per roll so less time less cost okay uh, especially when you have 2,000 and more ores to do uh, every time. So focusing a little bit more on the tube sheet, uh, what is challenging? Okay, so as we said, we need to make the ore faster and okay with the, with the anyway good precision. But on the other side, uh, the tube sheet can be made out of uh, different material. Okay, so depending on the final uh, usage of uh, the heat exchanger okay because we say if we are into the food industry or the pharma industry you probably need something like stainless steel or maybe some super alloy like titanium okay on the other side if you are maybe into the um, oil and gas industry or you have not to treat uh, uh, fluids will go in contact with the uh, with humans let me say you can stay with a uh, uh, steel uh, material okay anyway even if you are going to see or to machine steel okay into the tube sheet normally the steel that is used is like a low carbon steel okay that maybe from the pure um, cutting standpoint is not that challenging because it's normally soft and um, uh, you don't need a super high uh, technological uh, coating or, or substrate but what is challenging is about the chip breaker the chip breaking sorry okay because the low carbon steel has the tendency to make long chip so it's always very difficult to make the chip small and to you know manage the chip evacuation properly and uh, even because the tube sheet can be really quite big okay and, and maybe you have you need you need a, a long drill like um, 8 or even 12 times d so very very long tool and uh, the chip evacuation is critical to make the drilling operation successful okay but and anyway, so this is the steel, and of course, then we have always uh, the stainless steel or the, su the super alloys like the titanium part, uh, where sometimes you have also combination between two materials like uh, uh, steel on, on one side and stainless steel on the other side. So there are a lot of um, complications, and, and, and that's why uh, it's important to put a lot of focus on this one, and then we are going to see what we can offer in terms of solution for all these kind of uh, um, challenging that we challenges that we have on, on the tube sheet now i still see people are joining so thanks for being here again so now i see people from Switzerland, from germany wow it really I, I i i really love to see people joining from all around the world thanks again for being here don't forget to put your like and if you have any question uh just type in into the comment section that is below here and i will make sure that i will go to answer to your question during the uh during the session now, um, moving back, uh, uh, let me say to the heat exchanger part. Okay, so we have seen the tube sheet. The second portion or the second component that is important in terms of, uh, of drilling are the baffles. Okay, so the baffle, I would say at the end of the day, they are a kind of poor components. Okay, because when we look at the quality of the steel that is normally being used into baffles, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, very low carbon steel so there is no uh, quality steel that is normally used for for baffles um, so also here probably they are not so challenging in terms of cutting but you have mo even more problem with the, the chip evacuation or the chip formation in general and in consideration also to the quality low quality of the steel that we normally use into baffles uh, there is a, a, um, a great let me say issue connected to the abrasivity of the material so it's not uh, hard but it's more abrasive okay so that's one of the challenge that we normally have in in, in machining baffle other than that 
what I see typically happening uh, to customers is that being a poor component of buffers, so you cannot invest uh, too much machining time in making holes into them. Uh, and normally those buffers have a very low uh, thickness, okay? They can go from 10 to 18, 20, 22 millimeters, so something that is like, uh, anyway, if we also talk about inches, less than one inch. So it's like, they are very thin. So the, the, the tendency in the industry is to machine the buffer in stacks, okay? So, and what does it mean in stack? So means that the customer put uh, one, two, three, four, even five buffer, one on top of the other, okay, to make like a sandwich of buffer. They place into them the machine table and they drill the buffer all together. So you have multiple layer that they are not welded together, or sometimes they do just a few welding point all around to make them, uh, to, to put them together. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it's not a solid entity, okay? So you have always, uh, the buffers in between that they can deflect uh, under the, the cutting forces, okay? So you have this kind of uh, spring effect or spring movement. Uh. So beside the complication of having a, um, a long chip material with uh, a lot of abrasive abrasivity, okay? Um, or abrasiveness, sorry. Uh, you have also the, 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 the complication about the setup of, of, of uh, the component, because as I said, you have multiple components, put them together, with uh, a low, very low stability, okay? Because the component can always, even if you put screws or you put um, welding point all around, uh, the, the, the buffers can always move. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, drilling through a, a, a component that is doing something like that uh, is very complicated because the drill can be, you know, caught by the, the, um, the component and you can get stuck. Uh, uh, so you risk to break the drill uh, and it's really a very complex uh, operation, even if, as I said, the component is like a poor component. So uh, the buffers are machined like this, okay? The heat exchanger, uh, sorry, the tube sheet anyway, is, uh, needs uh, to, 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 to make a lot of holes uh, and uh, you need to drastically reduce uh, as much as you can uh, the, the machining time to reduce the cost of, uh, of the component. Um, so, as I said, everything, or let me say almost everything in heat exchanger is connected uh, to drilling. So that's why the, um, let me say, the, 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 the topic for today is talking about what video can then offer and what kind of strategy maybe um, uh, we have in place uh, to address those challenges um, into the heat exchanger. So now maybe um, I will move back to my to my desk. So don't forget to put any any like. So hand drawing, as I said, is always a valuable uh, capability to have in the industry, even if we are in <laughs> you know in the world of uh, 3D machining, 3D drawing, and all of that. But anyway, if you want to represent any quick idea on a, on a whiteboard like this or on a piece of paper, hand drawing is always a good thing to have. So. Maybe it's, it's a kind of uh, thinking that you can do for your, for your future if you are in uh, engineering like, like me. So now I still see people are joining. So everyone, hello. And now we are connected back to, to my desk. So and also good. So I'm in, in my office. This is one of the place where, uh, you know, sitting, sitting at this desk, uh, we think about products, we think about a uh, solution for our customer. So this is actually a very important place for video, okay? So, and it's fantastic. It's fabulous for me to be uh, here to make a live from the place where we think about our customer. So that's, that's absolutely something great for me. Now, I have a lot of things here on my desk because I want to show you uh, now the, the, one of the main solutions that we have for what we have seen uh, just now um, in terms of, uh, of heat exchanger. So, of course, this is not the only product uh, that we have to offer. Okay, we have different solutions and maybe uh, we will do other live event to talk about the other products. So put your like uh, or your comment if you want to have more live event from Vidya. And, uh, but anyway, uh, this is one of the latest products that we launched uh, where we already had uh, some good success over the last uh, 18 months because it's been launched like uh, January last year. And we are continu continuously expanding the product uh, 
to be more you know um, on top of these uh, machining environment of uh, of the heat exchanger and uh, yeah anyway i want to talk about some of the uh, some of the key feature of the product uh, and how this product can help you in machining heat exchanger and then maybe we can talk about uh, one of uh, the geometry that we normally use when we have to machine the baffle that as i remember they are like made in stacks and there is a lot of instability and and we have a kind of uh, um, let's say specific geometry for that or a, a geometry that we know is successful and it will help you to um, uh, let me say address the, the challenges there so the product that we have uh, is called uh, tdmx okay so here we have a portion of the 3d model so i will start using the 3d model to explain you how the the product is done so what kind of um, uh, feature that we have and all the um, engineering thinking that we put into the product and then we move on the real product that i have on my desk but i will need to wear a pair of gloves to let me say we are focused on on, on safety um, to show you uh, some of the um, let me say secret about the product okay so we talk about tdmx so tdmx is essentially what we call a modular drill or maybe in other let me say way to call it um, it's an interchangeable head type of drill okay so what does it mean this means that we have a steel body okay so a body that is made out of steel and then we have a, we have a full solid carbide head that is connected to the steel body and uh, what is important is that differently to an indexable drill uh, where we normally have inserts similar to the turning inserts uh, the solid carbide head that we have on a modular drill is um, featuring geometry uh, similar to a solid carbide drill okay so we have a, a, a proper real point geometry okay as you can see or maybe i can just take the the insert model so when you look at the insert uh, we can replicate uh, the same point geometry that we have on on a solid carbide product uh, in this kind of modular or interchangeable piece of uh, solid carbide and so why we do that okay so if you think about pure drilling normally the solid carbide product so where we have an integral shank of solid carbide with a geometry on top and the fluting and so on in terms of productivity um, it's always the best okay because if you combine if you think about the feed rate that you can achieve uh, with the solid carbide drill and the, and the cutting parameter in general so you have the maximum productivity an indexable drill is more flexible because you can do more uh, kind of uh, strange stuff <laughs> but uh, in terms of feed rate uh, it's much much less the good thing about a modular drill like this one or maybe i can i can just place because at the end of the day the topic is about i have my steel body and then i have my um place on on the opposite side but anyway uh, i have my solid carbide head this is a kind of perfect combination between the solid carbide geometry okay that i have here and the flexibility of the steel body and of course will allow me to also increase you know the diameter okay uh, so this is not a product for small holes but it's uh, let me say a product for bigger hole because uh, we start from a 16 millimeter uh, diameter up to 40 millimeter in diameter so let me say a medium range um, uh, kind of diameter but the good thing is that we have the flexibility of an indexable product with uh, the parameter very very similar and very close uh, to a solid carbide product okay so i see other people joining hello everyone bosnia Herzegovina, uh, people from spain thanks everyone to be here again now of course when we think about this one let me say my question would be where is the complexity of developing a product like this one the complexity stands in the connection between the solid carbide head and the body okay so the very com the very complex part is making sure that uh, the connection is as much as stable as possible okay because i could have the best carbide the best coating the best geometry everything set properly but if the 
let me say, if the insert is moving, like in this 3D model, into the pocket seat, it's everything wasted at the end of the day because I can push with the feed rate, but at the end of the day, if the, the insert is moving like this, okay, uh, it's, the, I mean, there is no advantage because then you, you will go to break, uh, let me say, uh, the, the pocket seat and your insert is no longer connected to the, to the steel body and you cannot push with your feed rate, so you need to slow down, okay? So the first step that we did uh, to develop the TDMX has been around uh, making a very, very strong connection uh, between the insert and, and the pocket seat, okay? So I, I will show you this one, uh, this what I'm saying on the real body, okay, later on, um, because the, the, the main point is that when we are going to clamp the insert into the pocket seat, okay, so the insert will get locked inside the pocket seat. So we have tighter tolerance, okay, in the pocket seat and between the pocket seat and the, and the, and the insert, okay? So very tight tolerance. We have a kind of taper, okay? It's not visible, okay, of course, because we have a precise angle that we used. Uh, but anyway, we have a kind of tapered pocket seat to make sure that when you are reaching the bottom of the pocket seat, uh, the tolerance are really, really tight, okay? So it's a kind of blocked uh, connection between the two. So in this way, you are 100% sure that the insert is locked into the pocket seat and there is no possibility for, for the insert to move during the drilling operation, even if you're pushing the feed rate uh, at the higher limit, okay? Many times I've seen the situation where the machine is the limit, where there is not enough torque to handle the feed rate that we can reach with the TDMX, okay? So we know that the connection is very powerful. Beside that, so we have seen that we have tighter tolerance and of course we have this kind of uh, tapered um, uh, faces on, on the pocket seat to make sure that the tolerance are even getting closer, okay? But then the other very important thing is that when we look at the pocket seat without the insert mount on, on the drill body, we see that the pocket seat is not flat, so we don't have two flat area, but we have this kind of double angle. So we have an angle here and then we have another angle here, okay? And of course, this is 100% reflected on the insert, okay? So you have a flat and then an angle surface here and on the other side the same, okay? So we have the flat surface and then the angle. And this is very different from uh, uh, any other product uh, uh, in the marketplace. So of course there is competence or um, competitor in the marketplace having a modular drill, okay? But what is important is always the connection, so the secret behind that. So every other competitor with a similar clamping mechanism, they have like flat surfaces. We do have this kind of double angle that it's all, even, let me say, um, cancel the probability that the insert can, let me say, do this kind of movement, okay? Swinging uh, from one side to the other during the drilling operation. So even if maybe the drill is vibrating, okay, because it can happen that you have a long overhang, uh, you have a long um, um, holder, or your machine is not stable 100%, or you have even your component, okay, maybe you have the steel body that is moving like this, okay, and this is the good thing about having a steel body because you have this kind of flexibility that is not the best in case, um, uh, the best kind of setup for a solid carbide drill, but uh, uh, the insert will remain 100% stable into the pocket seat. So even if the drill is moving, the insert will remain in position, okay? So because of this kind of double angle. So we are 100% uh, sure to deliver the best stability. So coming back to the, pro to, the, to the component that we have seen before, this kind of stability will allow you to increase the feed rate uh, to a much, much, much higher level compared to anyone else, okay? So, you know, connecting the dots in terms of cost reduction, if you're increasing your feed rate with, uh, with your drill into the tube sheet or the buffers, you are going to lower the time that your component has to stay on the machine. So consequently, you are going to reduce dramatically your cost 
into um, that you have into your component okay so that's that's the point now I wanted to um, look a little bit at the clamping mechanism okay so we have seen how the pocket seat is done and um, looking now at the uh, at the clamping mechanism so also this one is very different from all the competitor so I hope that the 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 section um, that we have here in this 3d model is quite clear anyway so we have seen that the insert has this kind of uh, stub pin in it here below okay or we can call stub pin we can call shaft so i understand that different part of the world maybe they have um, a different way to <laughs> uh, to name a mechanical component okay let's call it shaft that probably is is better with this kind of uh, notch here so we have essentially two different bolts in the drill body okay you see one is like 45 degree inclined and the other one is perpendicular to the rotation axis of of the drill so the one here on top is necessary to clamp the insert in the pocket seat or eventually let me say even to push down the insert because whenever you are going to place the insert in the pocket seat okay so when you just place it the insert remain something like this okay it's not going to touch the bottom of the pocket seat because of the inclination that i told you before here uh, so you need actually some so something so uh, actually this screw to push down the insert and let me say activate uh, the clamping system that is all about the tolerances and the taper that we have on the pocket seat on the other side so as we said, and I will demonstrate to you later on on the, on the real drill, whenever you have to unclamp, so you have to take the insert out from the pocket seat. So if you just simply remove this screw, it's impossible for you to take the insert out. So you need just, I mean, to take the insert out from with just with the force of your hand. So you will need a second screw here on the bottom that working, you know, with uh, this kind of uh, inclined uh, uh, chamfer here and, and the chamfer on the shaft uh, pushing this in it will take it will push out the insert okay so that's why as i said this uh, this is a very different concept from any other competitor that's why differently from any other producer we have two screws instead of maybe only one um, just because you need something from the back that is pushing out the insert from the from the pocket seat um, and of course uh, not to forget so with this system that we have you don't need to take the drill out from the machine whenever you have to change the insert okay so you can you can leave the drill like in the machine okay in this position and then operate the two screws to take the insert out and place it again and push the green button to start again the machining operation so very very interesting concept now let me take my gloves because uh, as we said, we are 100% focused on, on safety. So now I see also in the meanwhile, com comments are um, coming. So please do the same for other products like VSM 890, VSM 490 and VXF, of course. Yeah, I really appreciate this kind of comment because uh, yeah, we want to do more live. <laughs> this is not the only one. It's the very first, uh, but it's the very first of a long series. So we will make more live. And if you have specific, uh, uh, wishes or requirement or you want to i don't know talk uh, about any specific topic just let me know and and we will go to organize uh more um more live event like this one talking maybe about different products or different components or different industries so be free to um to make your 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 comment here uh, oh i see a lot of people coming from india so i i really appreciate that thank you very much for taking your time to be uh, here with me um, so now we move from the 3d model that is nice to see okay but we are in the real world so let's talk about real tools uh, and this is ladies and gentlemen our tdmx okay so as i said this is actually a five times the drill body diameter 26 okay uh, we have you know the the drill body is made out of uh, a high quality steel with a uh, um, a proper coating on it and then we have the carbide head here on on the top okay so now um, what 
I want to show you is about clamping and un unclamping the insert and then demonstrate uh, what I was saying to you before about uh, the fact that uh, it is impossible to take out the insert with your hand without having the second screw here on the bottom. So now let's start with the clamping uh, operation that is very easy. Okay, so this is your drill body without the insert. And, and by the way, you see the pocket seat uh, with this kind of X shape as I was um, showing you before on the on the 3d model and by the way this is the, 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 this is the reason why we call the product tdmx okay so the x at the end is basically to represent the x on on the uh, on the pocket seat shape okay so we do have our insert here okay so the insert with the shaft and the notch that i mentioned you before so whenever you are going to clamp the insert into the the drill body make sure that the notch Okay, is oriented on the same side of the screws. Okay, so you place your insert, and uh, yeah, my camera is even capable to show you that there is still some space. Okay, here in between the insert and the bottom of the pocket seat. Okay, so even if I push down, the insert remain where it is. Okay, so now to properly clamp the insert into the pocket seat, what I need is basically to move the screw that is now here on the top so the 45 degrees now uh, let's say i'm going to yeah move so whenever i feel that i uh, finish the stroke okay so you see that the insert reached the bottom so it's only about few newton meters so you don't need to you know to to really uh, apply a lot of force so the insert is 100% clamped. Huh? So just make sure that the second screw here is inside the drill body. Okay, it's not going out. Huh? And then you are able to place your drill in the, in the machine and, and push the green button and start your drilling process. Now, what is happening when you have to unclamp the insert? Huh? And, and this is, believe me, it's about demonstrating the stability of the connection between uh, the, the carbide head and the drill body, okay? So the stability, I want to make it, make it very clear again. The stability is the secret to increase the feed rate and increase the feed rate is the secret to reduce the machining time equal. So this equation is about reducing the cost of uh, machining those components that we have seen before, okay? So we're not talking about the product just to talk about that. We are talking about the product to, to give you the solution to reduce the cost of your, of your um, <coughs> production. Okay, so now if I need to unclamp the insert, so I will go to essentially make a two to three turns of the screw. But anyway, what I want to demonstrate today is that I can even take the screw completely out. Okay. Okay, from the drill body. So you see the screw is out. I will place the screw on my desk. And if I try to, you know, uh, to pull the insert from the pocket seat is not coming out. So this is basically locked and stuck inside the body. So that's the secret, right, guys. Is the secret why you can push with the feed rate a lot, okay, much more than any other drilling system because the drill is perfectly like a one piece together with the steel body. That's the point. Now, what you need now to unclamp, okay, is like with the same screwdriver, okay, so the two bolts are essentially identical, so it's absolutely identical. You go to place your screwdriver into the, the bottom, um, the bottom screw that I call it ejector. Maybe it's not exactly the proper English term, but uh, I like probably the thinking that this is a kind of ejector. So I start to, you know, tight in, okay? And whenever I push a little bit, you see that the insert is starting to move, okay? So you see that we have, exactly, now in this case, I think it's very clear. So you have some space now between the insert and the bottom. So then you have to take this back to the original position, and then your insert is out from the, from the, from the pocket seat. So that's why we have the needs of having two screws instead of only one, but believe me that in terms of uh, uh, time for exchange is nothing. 
in comparison to what we can achieve uh, in terms of uh, feed rate uh, and then cost reduction of your component. Well, this is the product. Then, of course, what do we have today are different geometries available. We have this kind of 140 degree geometry uh, available. So it's a kind of standard split point, uh, standard from the external shape. Okay, We have a lot of uh, engineering stuff into the, the micro edge preparation um that are let me say suitable for the e uh, for the tube sheet part when it comes to the baffle okay where we have to machine them i, I remember you like in stacks uh, so more baffles all together that are like you know dancing <laughs> all together because they are moving so we have another geometry available that is like completely flat so it's not a 140 degree point geometry but it's a 180 degree point geometry and this one uh, will give you the possibility to machine the baffle in stacks of three or five uh, um, plates all together with a flat geometry called FPE geometry, FP like flat, flat bottom, something like that, that is capable to give you security, stability, reliability, consistency in machining the baffles. Okay, guys, for today, I think uh, we cover a lot. So there is a lot of things that we can talk about the, um, the energy. Uh, and of course, as I said, we are going to organize more live event like this one on Facebook. Uh, and maybe we are also going to have live event, maybe also on LinkedIn or other social media. So we need to understand our um, technical capability to do so. But anyway, we are going to make that. So in, in, as a closure, of course, I want to thank you everyone to be here. So I see, I saw a lot of people was uh, coming in. Uh, I received very good comment. I like the fact that people around the world was on the, on the live event. Uh, I put a link, okay, here below. So make sure you are going on the video.com website uh, to look more about our products and our offering and follow Vidya on all the social media. It could be LinkedIn, uh, it could be Facebook like here. Uh, it could be um, Instagram. So uh, I'm always there also on the social media. So if you want to also follow myself, it's not a bad idea. But anyway, uh, I really thank you for your participation. And um, um, I'm looking forward to uh, have another event with you all. And uh, for the moment, I want to wish you all the best. Stay safe, stay healthy. Um, and uh, yeah, make sure you'll be here um, in the next live event. Thank you very much, everyone, and I really wish all the best. Bye.